It's a great pleasure for me to be here today and take part in this uh, seminar. And it's uh, very nice to give the, a short introduction to our theme today, which is under the first pan panel number one, uh, the role of international law in promoting women's rights. The equal rights of men and women were first referred to an international human rights context in the preambles of both the United Nations Charter of 1945 and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. The second uh, major step was made in 1979 when a comprehensive declaration of women's human rights, including both categories of civil and political rights and economic, social and cultural rights, were embodied for international recognition in the United Nations Convention of Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. Other milestones of the international women's rights which should be mentioned are the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, which was adopted at the September 1995 Fourth World Conference on Women by representatives from 189 countries and its follow-up, Beijing Plus Five. The Millennium develop go Development Goals and uh, setting of them, they also uh, should be mentioned. And especially number three, of them, which underlines that there is no chance of making poverty history without significant and rapid improvements to the lives of women and girls in all countries. So the Millennium Development Goal 3, to promote gender equality and empower women, signaled global recognition that this is both an important development goal in itself and a key to the success of all the other goals. I also want to stress the importance of the UN Security Council's Resolution 1325. It has to be mentioned when we think about the basic agreements. All these international agreements, and as you noticed, I did not mention all of them, they are great achievements. But we also know that we still have a very long way to go. In today's world, human rights are still very threatened, not least by a world in which civil and international conflict has become the mainstay of life, in which civilians, civilians are increasingly at risk from related human rights abuses. Likewise, with regard to women's rights, how can we be optimistic when rape and sexual assault are used to achieve political objectives during armed conflict when every year thousands of women and girls are murdered in the name of honor, and when trafficking of women is widely acknowledged as one of the most lucrative industries for the international criminal underworld. Also, a new report by the European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights presents alarming results, and this uh, survey was world's biggest ever survey on violence against women. Uh, the survey reveals uh, the extent of abuse suffered by women at home, work, in public and online. The study shows that 33% of women have experienced physical and or sexual violence since the age of 15. That corresponds 62 million women. The report also informs us that 43% have experienced some form of psychological violence by either a current or a previous partner, such as public humiliation, forbidding a woman to leave the house or locking her up, forcing her to watch pornography and threats of violence. And as many as 55% of women have experienced some form of sexual harassment. It is very sad that 67% of women did not report the most serious incident of partner violence to the police, police or any other organization. When we think about women's rights, uh, we have to bear in mind that also a lot of progress has been made. For example, the gender parity in primary education has almost been achieved and women's proportion in national parliaments have grown. But in any case, there is a lot to do. 
In regard to the future step, future steps, and also when we think about this international uh, law, I think that gender equality and women's rights are key to addressing the unfinished business of the Millennium Development Goals and accelerating global development beyond 2015. The post-2015 framework should retain a strong stand-alone goal on gender equality and women's empowerment as recommended and, and also it should include gender-specific targets and indicators in other goals. As a strong post-2015 framework should take a holistic view on gender inequalities. It should address girls' completion of, of uh, quality education, women's economic empowerment, universal access to sexual and reproductive health and rights, ending violence against women and girls. We also have to st strengthen women's voice, leadership and influence, women's participation in peace and security, and women's contributions to environmental sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, human rights for women requires, require firstly the setting of human rights standards, the acknowledgement by the international community, and the adherence by state parties, but also the challenging of a wide range of fundamental cultural and religious beliefs. These may be hundreds of years old and may be as embedded in the mindsets of the female members of society as those of male members. Ladies and gentlemen, with this word, I would like to open this uh, panel number one. Thank you. <laughs>